remind me not to uh, become a web host on any sort of live programming. Oh, damn it, I'm still recording. Okay, thanks for joining us. It's the 31st of August, 2020, here at the Mycroft Developer Sync. So, today, uh, Mondays are our day to check in on our sprints and see how we're doing. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, Chris Bear, can you take us through the open sprint? Now, now it is a singular open sprint, so that's that's a that's a change. Um, so. I think we can just hopefully now with everybody assigned to everything, this uh, just filtering by person will work. So let's see. This does what it's supposed to do. All right. So this would be me. Um, the upload endpoint to move is now um, tested and ready to go. So that's all in review right now. I don't have a PR yet because I'm. Um, I'm adding this script into it as well. Um, so, which is what I'm working on right now is the uh, script that will take the wake words uh, we collect on a daily basis and copy them over um, to the NAS. So, um, once that's done, I've got a few other, a few more tasks over here to do this week, but um, that's kind of where I am um, right now. I also finished these over here <coughs> with the new schema. So um, that's my progress last week and what I'll be doing this week. Derek. All right. Okay, so um, yeah, so I've got, uh, Let's see, I think I updated you guys last week. I got Ken's device out to him uh, that arrived Sunday. There was unfortunately a little bit of issues in the uh, shipping, hence parts broke, but uh, Ken got a, is getting it uh, working. So I'll probably update you on that. Um, I haven't heard word yet on whether or not Kevin received the stuff I sent him, but that was delayed uh, a day. So today I've been continuing on the R1 prototype full assembly um, and hoping to get that uh, first draft done by the end of the week. I am going to add a couple new tasks here um, real quick to create. So what I sent to Kevin was a laser cut enclosure for the dev kit designed for the SG201. And, uh, Kevin updated us on Friday that uh, everything was going well with the bring up of those boards. So he's, he's probably already ha has shipped, uh, I think, six boards. He had nine working and he was going to keep two or three, so six or seven boards to us in uh, Lawrence. And uh, so I will be distributing those to you guys. So I need to get you something to put them in. So I will be building uh, a number of the laser cut enclosures uh, for the rest of you guys, Ken and Chris. Uh, eventually I'm going to get one to, to you guys as well. So I'm adding those uh, tasks to, to this week's sprint because we want to be getting those out as soon as we can. Um, if it makes more sense to like, when it gets around to my turn, if it makes more sense to just flat pack everything and construct it here so that it, you know, is less breakage, yeah. then totally do that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think that's going to be my my preferred method of delivering these in the future because um, the, the acrylic is somewhat brittle. I mean, it's actually pretty good once you know have it in place. Through the through uh, shipping, it, it can't be prone to cracking. It's broken before, um, and these are much simpler when you don't have all these cables and stuff that we had to deal with with uh, off-the-shelf So 
you guys can put it together like a kit. <laughs> <laughs> Our own dev kit. Yeah, there you go. Just like uh, the consumer, you can tell me whether <laughs> it's bad or not. <laughs> um, well, so the consumer, the dev kit version, will push this. Um, there a little bit of stuff on um, slide deck as well, uh, so I might, might be working a bit that up as well this week. Um, but yeah, that's me. All right. Oh, Ken, your task is in here. We still got to work on your Jira ness. Something's going wrong here. Maybe they're not assigned to you. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I know when I uh, I had a uh, custom uh, Jira query for my open tickets across all the projects, and I noticed that that query failed. So I don't know what's on with that, but I am working on the ticket that Derek assigned me on Friday which is to figure out why this thing comes up and works mm -hmm. sporadically as far as the uh, audio output goes. And I updated okay. it. Did you, uh, did you add that ticket to this sprint and assign yourself to it? I, I did not it? do anything except find it, <laughs> that it was assigned to me, and updated the comment this morning, uh, and that was it. Okay, just when you get a chance to move it into the sprint so we have visibility. What's the current sprint, micro sprint 13? Yeah. Let me see if I have it here. Uh, audio output. And so let's see. So it's actually unassigned. Let me fix that. I'll assign it to me. And uh, where's the sprint? Let's see. Reporter label priority shows seven more fields. Original last minute time. Epic link component sprint. Okay. And it's my cross sprint 13. There we Correct. go. So I would think it doesn't have a save button. So I'm assuming that it automatically did it. You want to refresh and see if it's there? Yep. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, great. So you're going to be working on that. Uh, I expect that will be something you can't work on until the Mark II is up and running. Uh, do you have... uh, my, Mark II, my Mark II is up and running and registered and I'm into it with SSH and I'm into it with a keyboard plugged into USB working off the monitor. We've become equ acquainted. It was working and not working and we're doing battle now. Uh, I know how to take it when it's working and get it to not work. And that's very simply to set the volume from the command line or have Pulse Audio touch it in any way. So uh, that's where I'm at. And I'll be working on this for the rest of my life or until I fix it, whichever comes first. Sounds great. Uh, if you fix that, uh, you know, say in the next 15 minutes, what are you working on next? Ah, ah. Well, I would say that's highly unlikely, but in the in the case where this does get fixed before I pass, I will move on to the yes/no issue um, regarding uh, why we're not getting the yes/no in conversational mode right away. Gotcha. Okay, great. Let's make sure we get that on the sprint. I'm sure there's a ticket for that somewhere in here. There okay. is, and it's just on the side. You want me to put that on the sprint too? I can do that yeah. real quick. Yeah, that'd be yeah. good. We can always move it to the next one if you don't get to it this week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I yeah, I have some questions on the firmware and stuff on this uh, device. Where do I go to, or who do I speak to about that stuff? Uh, Derek is probably your best bet. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> we've already done that. What? Uh, what? <laughs> What are, what are you looking for? Well, uh, some information on um, the actual device drivers that were developed for this card. Which card are you working for? Is it SJ201 or the Seed Studios? Seek, S-E-E-D, S-E-E-E-D, the re-speaker array. 
Yeah, probably Seed's website's your best bet. Well, I, I can't point you to the, the firmware that you can download and flash onto it, although I've flashed it already to what we are using, which is- I'm not too uh, concerned about that. I'm just wondering about the device drivers in general. So let me understand. The S-E-E-E-D is an off-the-shelf component. Is that correct? It's an off-the-shelf re-speaker array? Yes from, yes, from a company that makes hardware and claims that they are not going to do any of the software work, as I understand it. And um, well, they, they have done their own custom firmwares for, for the, so that you can flash onto the Xbox. <clears throat> okay, maybe I'm thinking of something else. That, that I think you're All thinking right. of, well, <clears throat> I guess I'm just, I guess I'm just looking for somebody who can explain how our hardware is connected together. Well, Chris, Chris has built the latest, Chris Bear has built yeah. the latest image. So I'm anything sure. software preloaded pertaining to the interface with the re-speaker, uh, he has built. So he's probably the best to answer that. Well, how do we know which USB device and sub-device IDs are assigned to this hardware? Uh, the reason um, I, I wonder if getting confused. like we should take this to another yeah. meeting or something. Like, yeah, well, let's things we'll outside through this. Asking who I can yeah. speak to. <laughs> I well, just need to know who I can speak to. The team's not that big. Just I ask think, everyone. Yeah, yeah I, I think this would be a good thing. Chat thing is where I'd raise it. And you can look in the Mycroft repository too, because. Um, that's where the, that's where the, that's where a lot of the drivers in the OS, the Buster OS, and is all kind of put together. Is in that Pycroft repository, and there's documentation in there about how that's done. Um, there's like a recipe we call it, how you get from point A to point B. So if you want to uh, if you want to poke around there, um, you can do that. And yeah, feel free to hit me up in in chat, and I'll certainly try to answer your questions. Okay. I'll just I'll piggyback on this question real quick. The, so the um, Pycroft, we've supported the re-speaker microarray for some time. Correct. Um, so a lot of that was already existing when you when you modified the Pycroft to become the new Kiwi sort of. Yeah, I just on boot up, I just selected the re-speaker um, option from boot. Um, so what you know, if, if there's issues with that driver, it's going to be part of that Pycroft image. Right, which has been around for at least like yeah. 18 months or so. Yeah. Months. Yeah. So are okay. you saying that this is the exact same hardware and software that's used in another device that's been working? This is the base for this image is the, the image that we distribute for Pycroft. How well what is Pycroft, Pycroft works. I, I, you have to remember I'm relatively new around here. Pycroft is just the, it's basically it's a build it yourself Mycroft. You, you start with a Raspberry Pi 4 and um, the image and you provide your own uh, speaker, your own microphone and build it yourself. And that's, so Pycroft is just like the software and the um, operating system for, for that implementation, the kind of a do it yourself. So you're saying it's it's the image we've built for the Mark II. It's the image we've built for people who want to build their own Mycroft, basically, using a Raspberry Pi. That's why it's called so using, Raspberry Pi. Not using the re-speaker daughter board, then they're using the built-in Broadcom chip for USB audio. Um, I, well, there's several options when you, when you go into Pycroft and do the set, initial setup, there are several options for what kind of microphone you want to use and, um, and what kind and of, kind of speakers. Speakers. and yeah. we've got both. We've got the default built-in Raspberry Pi drivers, and we've got the new stuff for the re-speaker array. So my question is, why do we have the default stuff for the old built-in speakers still hanging around if it's going through our daughter board now? I suspect it's getting confused periodically on which is the default de device. That, that uh, was, I, 
that was what I suspected as well. I just, that's a little lower level <laughs> than I know how to fix. So I, that because there are two drivers, but I know from, from digging, I did that the re-speaker driver is the default. I don't know how that would, you know, get flipped, but you know, maybe by removing the other one or, but I mean, we, it would work better. I don't, I don't know. I, I think they're so, both configured to be the default and there's contention there, but I don't know that for sure. I'm so, just, I just got my device up. <laughs> okay. So Pycroft is intended to be a jack of all trades operating system for anybody who wants to use Mycroft on a Raspberry Pi. So it's intended to support, you know, the three and a half out on the Raspberry Pi. I don't know if Raspberry Pi still has the three and a half, but I think it does. It's it's intended to support USB audio. It's intended to support daughter cards. And then it's it's built with the idea that the end user has deep enough expertise in Linux or is willing to go through enough pain to make it work. And and I think that we're, we kind of bridge those two things with Gez having deep experience in Linux and the rest of us willing to undergo significant pain. So the Mark II is really a, a Pycroft, but it's a supported version of the Pycroft that we officially support that has a certain, you know, micro a certain uh, speak, you know, everything that we kind of put into it, at least that Mark II that you and I have right now, SJ-201 is a different, will be a different story. Um, yeah, the SJ-201, we probably will strip that down to the absolute bare essential components to make it work reliably would be my guess. But yes, today it's generalist. And so don't be surprised if there's three different, three different drivers and a bunch of config files and, you know, ALSA and Pulse Audio running simultaneously and a bunch of other pain for uh, that, that has been left as an exercise for the end user. And us. Yeah, well, this is this is one of those issues that we you know identified pretty uh, well earlier this year, at least, um, that we need to definitely clean up the build and, and you know packaging system, right? So um, we don't have a we just don't have anybody who's in charge of the build process anymore right now. So that's a, that's a that's a role we're going to fill in. Uh, too sweet in the future, so. Yeah, I'm the closest we've got, unfortunately. I've been I've been slowly working away um, at the Pycroft automated build system as well, um, just on weekend kind of things, so that we can have you know nightly Pycroft builds, for example. Well, you know, a, a Pycroft build after all after any merge of, of um, anything into devs anyway. Well, I mean, I'm not ruling out hardware and I'm not ruling out that when something tries to reset it at the ALSA level slash Pulse Audio level and it, it's not flipping some bit properly during the reset sequence because it, it does put, ALSA does put these devices in suspended animation um, and then tries to bring them back up. So that bring up process could be the pro problem, I'm not sure. But it, it I don't say like there's contention because they both want to be card zero, and I think they. I, I haven't. I've only just seen this ticket, but like I'd also make sure that the audio service is actually running. That the audio um, what? That the audio service is running. What audio service? It could be. Microsoft. The, the, the Microsoft call audio service. I turned off it's, Microsoft. I'm, I'm trying to minimize. Oh, so it's all factors. audio output, right? Yeah, I've, okay. I've not plugged in my amplifier yet. And I've specifically turned off um, Mycroft. That it's not the culprit. And I'm just looking at the Linux working my way up the stack or down the stack. I'll be getting in the mod probe soon. But um, I'm just wondering who I can speak to that set this up and understands how it all works together. I mean, you who, might be able to talk to our, OK about it. OK, so OK is the guy that was doing our uh, our builds for the images, putting that stuff together? Yeah. OK, I'll reach out to him. Anyway, that's that's what I'm working on. So that's interesting, though, is that you said even without Minecraft running, it's still an issue. Oh, yeah, I can, I can, I can tell you how to turn. <laughs> I can tell you how to, from the command line, screw up your, your Mark II audio in like one command. Okay. I can, touch the, I can, the, uh, yeah. But did you say you turned off your, the, the amp? Cause isn't I don't that... even have it plugged in. 
when I got my when I got my poor Mark II, he was pretty beaten up. <laughs> None of the cables were plugged in, and everything was hanging out. And the case was cracked, and I got you know it's like when I used to build carburetors. I got a bunch of leftover parts, so uh, it, it's working, you know. Uh, but the point is, um, I specifically did not plug the amp uh, uh, cable in. Because uh, my concern was that's probably one of the places where if you put it in backwards, if it's not keyed, you can blow it out. So uh, I figured it should work without that. That's just an amplifier board. And uh, so that's that's the system that I'm testing on. And I can get it to go south as soon as you set the, uh, as soon as you touch the volume. So there's something that's not configured right. And I'm not sure if it's a initialization config file or if it's they're, they're contending to be device zero the default <coughs> i don't know yet so yeah anyway well, i just got it you know got it today <laughs> sounds like you've got a better handle on this than anyone else so yeah i would, I would check in with right. okay uh at this point yeah. see, see if he's got okay. an insight yeah I, I think it might be the priority on the um on the cards but i'll, I'll look at it all right anyway yeah, and, and to confirm i I've done that check where when this does when this bug appears and when this shows up, I've also tried to play just audio files in Linux Bay play um, outside of Minecraft and to no avail. So it, it's I yeah, don't yeah. think if it, I if I if I reboot it, um, you know, that's the other thing. Is it designed by design that when I say shut down, it doesn't power off? It just kind of keeps yeah, the screen on. Uh, I've got a bug in for that. It doesn't it doesn't actually do anything. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, if I shut it down and I pull the power out and I plug it back up and I plug it back in and it comes up and I shut everything down from a Mycroft perspective and I do an A play of a WAV file, I can get it to work. If I want to get it to not work, I just go tell it to change the volume to 50% and A play magically no longer works. So it has nothing to do with Mycroft Core. Uh, it's, it's, it's configuration or hardware driver. Anyway, that's... That's where I'm at. Okay. All right. Um, well, good luck with that. I expect <laughs> I expect you'll figure it out uh, without too much trouble. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Gez, you want to tell us uh, what you've been up to for the last week? <laughs> uh, yeah, been been working hard. Um, uh, good news is things are mostly working with 2008. 20, um, uh, there was uh, one little issue that came up uh, where the VLC um, module, uh, audio service module um, that's internal to Microsoft Core, it's only used inside Microsoft Core and by Microsoft Core, uh, but because it's named the same thing as the, the file that it's in. It then conflicts with the VLC package um, from Python that, that gets used. So, um, OK, submitted a fix to prepend all that audio service modules with, you know, with a, with a string so that they can't conflict. Um, so I was just uh, testing that out last night because um, we should probably, you know, include that before we before we cut the release, um, but I want to test it pretty solidly if, if it's going to go in there without um, having any time really in dev. Um, and I think other than that, uh, everything else can wait until um, until after the major release. Uh, so uh, the other thing is the skills. Um, there's a, a tiny bug in, um, well, not bug. There's a tiny issue where um, the movie master skill can sometimes uh, try to answer um, pretty general questions if they're not caught by some other Q and A skill. Um, so it seems pretty minor. So if you ask something like, "What is a floozy? What's it?" then it might say, "I don't have a movie by that name," but it's also because it, nothing else has been able to answer the question. Um, so I don't really see that being a big issue. Uh, and the plasma activity skill may need to get pulled out until it gets updated 
Um, but I'll, I'll try and ping a bit here about that. Um, see if we can get it uh, fixed up so it can get, uh, so it can stay in there for the release. Um, other than that, I think we're ready to, to pull the trigger and push it out today if we're lucky. Okay. All right, then. Um... While I still have everybody here, can I ask a question? Because something doesn't make sense to me. Sure, before you do that, um, there are six unassigned tasks in this sprint. Um, and can anybody claim these as, as theirs, as what they're working on? Looks, I would say new model creation Probably you can. Absolutely. Uh, the ones on the left, uh, at least with the tagging stuff, uh, don't we have a tagging meeting going off tomorrow? Yes. So we should probably hold off on those until then. Um, the plan for the first limited run, whose work is going to work on that? So that's something Derek and I need to discuss. OK. Uh, I don't and actually think it's going to be for this uh, sprint, though. I think I intended to put that in number 14. OK, we can move that. Um, there are RA Spotify. I'm inclined not to do this since we no longer can use Spotify. <laughs> so um, I, think, I think I heard Ake say something about he was going to modify it so that the user could put in his key. Oh, so everybody could have their own API key, basically, instead of the, the company based on Yeah, I saw that people can form. apply for their own API key, but it's, it's not like it's not a, a mass adoption thing. Like that can work for, for people who are happy to, you know, mess yeah. around. But, yeah. you know, we really need something that we need to fix the problem or move to something else. I've reached out to uh, through a different channel to Spotify and see if we can get that relationship reconnected. So, but we should I move this to the backlog in case we can get Spotify working again? Yeah, I think we should move. Yeah, it to that. okay. Okay. So, so, my question is this: the the fact that I don't have my I2C bus plugged in is causing exceptions to be thrown in core, which is fine because it's, you know, not connected the way it should be. That being said, uh, somebody here associated with us has written some code to do I2C because it's trying to communicate over our tornado bus. So yeah. the question becomes, who wrote that code? A number of a number of people wrote that code. Yeah, lots like, of us have touched it. Well, I don't think. Well, are we ready to move on from from the other part of the meeting and and dive deeper oh, into this? So yeah, yeah, we're we're done with the sprint stuff. So okay. Um, so the ITC stuff does the volume, right? Um. Uh, I think what what's confusing me is so we're we're talking about the KV image, and it's not doing any audio out, but the audio out is on the KV image is configured to be by the GPIO pins, right? Yeah, and so if you have the amplifier unplugged, I don't understand how you can expect any kind of audio out. Well, audio out will still work; it just will be pegged at full volume because you have no volume control. But the, the audio output is, okay, so with, with the Mark II, the re speaker is acting as uh, a USB, for USB. A USB sound card. And, yeah, okay. And so it's, it's, it, it's sending analog audio output via a three and a half you know, aux jack to the amp. Yeah. So what yeah. Ken has configured, he has that plugged in. The amp is powered and has the aux cable from the re-speaker microarray to the amp. 
So in okay. theory, it should still play back. It'll just be at full volume with no volume. And indeed, that's what it does. Yeah, so the reason we have code in core, Y2C code in core, is because of that max volume problem. We wanted to, to we want to put a cap on the volume, the potential volume it could use um, for things like barge in. Um, and we also wanted to put a cap on the, on the volume so we don't blow out the speakers. So that is the reason it, there is I2C code in core right now is we are, we're doing some I2C get and set commands um, inside of core just to limit the, what the max volume can be. And who wrote that code? Um, I maintained it recently. I'm not sure who wrote it. Um, could have been David Wagner would be my guess and someone who well, wouldn't play anymore. Yeah, Steve would have wrote it first, then David touched it, and Chris has touched it. Okay, I'm sure touched it at some point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, for, at a minimum, it's it's throwing exceptions that's causing like uh, you know delay issues. Uh, I forget the actual term I want to use, but that's that's the less of my concerns. The the, the larger concern of mine is what Chris was speaking to, which is um, if we have uh, something confused here where there's a GPIO that it thinks some piece of the code thinks it's using that and some piece of the code doesn't, I'm just not sure how that's all plugging together. So that's what I want to understand is the actual stack of what's going, you know, where's the USB come in, where's the actual driver, you know, is it, I'm assuming it's a low level driver that's ultimately getting route, rerouted through USB, but all right, so bottom line is we really don't have- I sent you, you a link with the script that sets up the driver too. Yeah, I saw that, I saw that. And I'll go okay. through all of our configs as well and stuff. Okay, all right. There's a comprehensive document that um, indicates all of the drivers and various dependencies um, from a planning perspective that details all of the, the interfaces between the various different pieces of the stack and you know plans the entire thing end to end in a comprehensive way where is that document it doesn't exist we should probably make it <laughs> <laughs> and he disappears <laughs> uh, yeah you better run <laughs> uh, okay um yeah so, when, so it's going to take me a little while to, to understand what is supposed to be and then see what's not so i have to it's going to take me a little while but so i was just wondering who wrote that IPC code because the assumption is they knew something about how the volume control is handled with and without the i2c and um i suspect that's where the problem lies since i can go to the command line and say set the volume and then everything goes out in left field so um. that's that's where I'm starting I think this also ties back into the the enclosure like confusion that we've been talking a little bit about as well, where you know I C stuff should really live in the enclosure, whatever we you know how we define that. And it's coming out of the skills log. Yeah, yeah. There's a Mark II skill, and that's where it's coming from right now. A Mark II pi. I'm very surprised that core configuration problems were being reported as a skill. It took me a while to find the right log. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, it, it, yeah. It says Chris said it goes back to we need to have that discussion about how we want to, you know, where things should go in code or enclosure specific things at some point. Um, that's where it is now. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll I'll keep digging. I'll figure it out. So while we're talking about this. How does this impact the SJ two hundred one? Is the drivers and the things we need for that going to be? Yeah, how how put together is it going to be when I get my hands on it? I guess is my question. Well, <laughs> good news. Good news is we're still using I two C as the okay. audio amplifier control. So any work around figuring out I two C is not lost. It will be useful on the SJ two hundred one. Um. I have less of a grasp on how similar the audio input is going to be. I know Kevin's experiments right now are using a stereo setup. Um, I believe right now the audio is coming in as mono for the, the re-speaker microarray. I don't know if that makes any difference or not. I don't think it does. 
Um, there's there's several there's several cards exposed. Some of them are mono, and some of them are stereo. And some are exposed as surround sound. Surprisingly enough. Uh, oh really? Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, yeah. But in it is. I mean, it's it's a different it's a different USB um, sound card than what the the Respeaker Micro A V two point oh is. I forget which chipset we chose. Kevin uh, chose. I forget, Michael. Which one did Kevin pick? I don't. I don't remember the chipset number. It's it's in the repo. It's in the repo. Yeah, but anyway, Kevin. Kevin's got all this stuff coming up, and you know, doesn't seem to be much of a problem. So, okay. Uh, well, this configuration throwaway. Is this going to get superseded by the new stuff? In other words, well, I don't. Should I yes. be working on in, that instead of this? In in a, in a sense, yes, and in a, in a way, no, because. The problems are, I suspect the problem is going to be generic, right? If you're having trouble with drivers, it's because we haven't, uh, uh, we haven't properly uh, really understood what's, what's the, the right way to configure, you know, the drivers. Um, the differences between the re-speaker array and the SJ201 are, well, actually, I don't know, what, I don't know how different they're going to be. You know, the SJ201 basically looks like a USB sound card. Uh, so it just uses standard off the shelf, generic sound card drivers. Uh, to get to the XMOS chip behind it, which does all the uh, front end noise canceling stuff, we go through a, it, it appears as a different chip on the USB bus. Um, and we also have, uh, there's also an I2C interface that we can use instead. So we've got a couple of ways to get to the XMOS chip. So one way or another, you know, we need to figure out how to properly configure the hardware so that it is exactly the hardware that we know it is and not, you know, sort of hand waving and guessing that, you know, throw drivers at it until it mostly works. <laughs> well, that's kind of where I was coming from is, you know, how's it connected? Is it going over I2C in this particular setup to the actual re-speaker, or is it going through a USB driver? Is I mean, you know, I just I, don't know. I haven't looked at it myself. I mean, I, I suspect you could take a look at the actual board. That's what I'll, I'll probably follow the have. wires around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think from my understanding and the beauty and simplicity of what I were, you know, trying to do by using USB as opposed to some other Raspberry Pi interface, is that it is just a USB microphone with all the magic sauce happening, you know, on the other side on that, you know, in the X so you don't have to worry, worry about it. Yeah, that, that works for the SJ201, but it doesn't help Ken with what he's trying to figure out now. Well, it shouldn't be all that different for the ReSpeaker Microray, because uh, it is also a USB interface. And yeah, the, the problem with that, and I understand where you're coming from, and that's like, um, it's like it's intended to work that way. The problem is with audio, every hardware manufacturer, even if they use the same chips, the same hardware, they they do just little one-off nuanced crap for their stuff to try to get a leg up on marketing or something. And so it's rare that you can take two different speakers off the shelf and they're going to have the exact same capabilities and functionality and work the same way. Um, and there's always hidden tricks and stuff in, in the communication panel that you can, you know, hit the control bits differently. So, yeah, I just, this, I'm just getting exposed to this. I don't, you know, know the hardware yet. I'll, I'll figure it out. All right. Anybody else hit any uh, roadblocks? I didn't hear anything very much. Well, uh, one thing I did want to bring up is I, the, the Mark II hardware repo that we said we were getting rid of is gone. Okay. But there's still two hardware Mycroft Mark II repos. Oh. One has an II for two, and the other has a the numeral two for two. <laughs> um, and one's private and one's public. So um, do we need them both? And Who made the Mark we... numeral two repo? What? Who, who made the Mark numeral two repo? Who made it? Um... 
Well, the numeral two, I think, is the one where it's the, is the active. Yeah. Is it? It's got nested in it. It's got uh, the OTS and the dev kit with uh, pushes on the dev kit from two days ago. Kevin, Kevin did some updates. So. Uh, yeah. Well, no, that's. Oh, okay. Sorry. I guess we're talking about different things. Yeah. So, hardware Minecraft Mark II. Oh, II. Uh, sorry. Yeah. II is the new one. Yes, the new one. Yeah. I, I don't see I what this mark is. Number two one you're talking about is. I don't, I don't see the repo that you're talking about there, Chris. Um, it's a private repo, so it might be that you don't have access to it. Maybe. I could see the other private repo, but that's the one I thought you just deleted. So. Yeah, the one that had a 2020 after it, that's gone. Right. But this other mark, my, hardware, Mycroft 2, looks like it's got some uh, fabricated parts folder, a PCBA main folder. So it was updated in January 2019. So yeah, right, right, right. OK, so that is the Xilinx design. Uh, ah. So that has all of the, um, that's actually got, yeah, all the, the stuff to build the Xilinx for. Yeah. OK, so well, we can renew that Xilinx. Uh, right. I'd rather not lose it entirely. But. Yeah, we can, and Even we want to keep it. I think we should keep that one private for now. Yeah. Well, yeah. It doesn't work, so. <laughs> right. I don't want to mislead anyone. All right. I, I'll rename that repo so there's no confusion as to um, which is which. Um, but the numeral two public repo is the one we're working in now. Right. OK. Just for maximum confusion, we've got a mark one. With the number one and a mark two two eyes. <laughs> I blame this on Josh. He decided that we needed to do number instead of I I. Yeah, it's Roman numerals. Always. Yeah. Yep. I mean it does it does kind of fit with you know things that are named that way. Well, yeah, that good thing the I two C guys didn't decide to name it that way. It'd be I I I C. <laughs> yeah, is it? And actually, isn't it like I? Don't know what people call I squared C. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Well, it's because it's supposed to be the I I C, but then they just name it I two C. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we should. Okay. Put, it should be marked squared. <laughs> there you go. Okay. That What's our be, next meeting? This will uh, be a problem with the command line. <laughs> Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow around this time to discuss uh, tagging design. Right. Um, so I do, if, um, you know, come prepared with uh, any ideas you have about how, you know, what functionality we want in the tagger for specifically for the wake word, and if there's generic things um, we think we can we can build that can be reused for other taggers. That's great too. But the first one we're building is the wake word tagger. Um, so, and that's, um, one of the things I'm supposed to be working on the next sprint. So, uh, which is why we're talking about it tomorrow. So if we could come up with, uh, maybe I'll start a Confluence document, um, on that so that we can, I may mean, already have one started actually, but, uh, so we have a, a point to start with, but, um, yeah, Derek, if you have some time to give the UI design, just a really a high level <laughs> thought, um, you know. Or if we or if you want to wait until you know we kind of put some requirements down as to what it needs to do, uh, we can do that I, too. I also have a document for that on my desk for getting that done for you. So I will weigh in on that. Okay. Yeah, most yeah. of my things like are going to start with questions like you know, are we going to have multiple choice like try and tag multiple things in the same you know screen? We're we going to show a wave that's, that's we, the design. Those, yeah. 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 All right. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. That's the type of stuff we'll put together, just thoughts like that. OK. Well, then I'll see you all probably tomorrow, then. All right. Take it easy. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye.